Hello and welcome to this lecture for chemical engineering thermodynamics. And what we're looking at today is systems and balance equations. So by the end of this video, you should be able to define a system, explain the properties of a system, define what a balance equation is, and then identify the difference between a conserved and non-conserved quantity. So systems are really one of the very, very key things that we use when we're modeling things in engineering generally, uh, but it's very, very important in chemical engineering. And so what we do in terms of defining a system is we divide the universe into two things, the system that we're interested in, whatever that may be, and then essentially everything else. Okay, so the surroundings of the system that we're interested in. And so, so two things, the system and then the surroundings. Those are the only two things that we're interested in. And so how you define a system is completely up to you. And it's up to what you're wanting to model and what you're wanting to achieve with your model. So in this example here, if you're wanting to consider climate change, then the whole world may be our system. So we'd be looking at uh, the energy coming in from the sun and then looking at how that energy is retained, dissipated and resent back into space. If we're interested in pollution, we may just be looking at a lake. So what leaches off the hill nearby? What happens if we cut down the trees around this lake? So forth and so on. And so, so the system is just what you're interested in. And so we could be interested in what a person does, if we're wanting to look at weight gain, for instance. But somewhere below that, we could actually define uh, a much more fine-grained system and actually have a look at how individual cells behave. And so in principle, uh, you could investigate weight gain both ways, but one would take a very, very long time to investigate uh, and the other one would be much more practical. Again, we change the scales of things depending on what we're wanting to look at. So we can look at an ore heap, for instance, and the leaching that occurs within that heap, or we could actually go all the way down and have a look at a single ore particle. It all just depends on what you're trying to achieve with your model. So the system and the definitions of the boundaries of the system are completely up to you. Now, not only can we define what the boundaries are, we, can, we also have the freedom to allow our systems to do many things. So a system can move. So we could be interested in uh, a truck or an airplane uh, or something like that. And so that system is obviously going to be moving. Okay? That's fine, we can do that with our system. A system can also change volume. Again, if this helps us solve what we're interested in solving, then uh, we're allowed to define this for the system. Okay, so, so a system is a construct that we just use to enable us to model something. So once we've defined what our system is, then we can start to apply balance equations to these systems. And so on this slide here, we've just got a very general balance equation. So we've got a, a system in the middle here, a system in the middle here, which contains some quantity. Uh, and I'm just calling that quantity X. And so into this system, we've got some flow in of something and some flow out of it as well. And so the, the change of that quantity in the system is just the flow in minus the flow out. Okay, so, so the amount of this quantity in the system can change over time. But we're not generating any of this quantity, okay? It's conserved. So in minus out equals accumulation. 
For non-conserved quantities, what changes compared to the conserved quantity is this generation term here, okay? So, so that we're actually generating something within the system. And so, so for balance equations, you're either the former case where things are conserved or you're the latter case where things aren't conserved and we can actually generate stuff within the system. And so there are uh, four very common scenarios where we'll see that in this course. The first of these is, is that mass is always conserved. Okay, so, so unless we're going to have a, uh, a nuclear reaction or something like that, we would expect the mass to be conserved in our system and we're not going to be looking at any uh, nuclear reactions in this course. So, so when we look at the system, we know that if we can measure the flow out and the flow in, we know how the mass of the system is going to change with time. And so in the mathematical notation, this change with time is represented here by the differential dm to t. So the rate of change of mass with time is equal to the mass, flow rate of the mass in minus the flow rate of the mass out. A very important thing to, to note here in terms of terminology is this dot on top of, on top of, the mass. Okay, so, so this is to do with a quantity that's flowing. So the mass contained within the system is in kilograms, but this flow here is in kilograms per second. So, so wherever you see this dot, it's a, it's, a, it's a flow of something. So in this case, mass in the following examples are moles, energy, that sort of thing. Now, something that's not conserved is the mass of a component. So, so here we've got uh, the subscript I, so I'm talking about the mass of component I in the system. Now, if we've got a reaction happening in the system, that means that we're going to be uh, generating some of this component I. And so, so this term down here is the is the generation term. And so that generation can either be making stuff or it can be consuming stuff. And so, so, so reactions, when we look at uh, individual components of stuff, mean that, that the individual component mass is not a conserved quantity. Along this same line is that the number of moles of a, of a particular component is not a conserved quantity either, for the same reason. A reaction happening in the system can either create or uh, consume moles of that species. So, so the moles of a particular species is not a conserved quantity. And uh, an extension of that is that the total number of moles is not a conserved quantity either, in contrast to the mass, where the total mass is a conserved quantity. Now, if we turn to look at the energy uh, in terms of balance equations. This is where we run into the first law of thermodynamics, that energy can be converted from one form to another, but cannot be created or destroyed. So that statement is saying that energy is a conserved quantity. So whatever uh, energy we have, it'll be conserved in one form or another. And so from that, because it is a conserved quantity, we get the directly analogous equation that we had for mass. We can now apply that to energy, where the rate of change of energy in the system is equal to the flow of energy in, remember the dot there is flow, minus the flow of energy out. And so directly analogous to what we saw with the, the mass balance for the system. Okay, so, and here we can see this very clearly. On the left, we've got our uh, balance for the total mass in the system. On the right, we've got our balance for the total energy in the system. This, you can see, contrasts against the non-conserved quantities, component mass and molar amount. But 
these two equations are very, very similar as well. Okay, so, so we can group these into two types of equations, conserved quantities and non-conserved quantities. Okay, so to recap for this lesson, systems need to be defined to use balance equations. Systems are defined by you to solve the problem at hand. There's a great deal of freedom in what you can do there. Systems can be fixed or moved. They can have a constant volume or a variable volume. This depends on you and what you're trying to solve. And then balance equations can either be conserved or non-conserved. And energy is a conserved quantity according to the first law. So it will obey a conservation equation. Okay, thank you.